That's just fascinating for me. Uh, our next speaker is Professor Lucinda Fonseca from, from the Institute of uh, Geography and Spatial Planning, University of Lisbon. Professor Fonseca is also a co the coordinator of the research cluster Migra, Mig Migrar. At the Center of Geographical Studies, her current research activities focus, among others, on migration dynamics and migration uh, trans transnationalism, demographic change, and regional development. Again, the list of her activities in we, uh, was too long to list, and, and her presentation will relate to Brazilian uh, migrants in Lisbon and Los Angeles, spatial practices, mental maps, and urban integration. Um, thank you very much uh, for your kind uh, introduction and uh, I would like to thank the kind uh, invitation uh, to, to be here today. I'm really very pleased to participate in, uh, in this conference. Well, um, I'll share with you some uh, of the results of um, research uh, I'm conducting with two of my PhD students. Um, and uh, in uh, this presentation, which is uh, about is focused on the spatial uh, integration, on urban integration of Brazilian migrants uh, in two uh, different contexts, Lisbon and, uh, and the Los Angeles. I would like to challenge a little bit the concept of spatial uh, uh, integration that traditionally is more related in uh, housing uh, patterns, neighborhood, and, and so on, and uh, focus more on uh, uh, more practical uh, respect of, uh, of learning the city and looking uh, at the city as uh, actant, looking at the role of the city itself um, in shaping um, the spatial practices of, um, of migrants. Well, uh, researchers uh, concerned with the uh, spatial aspects of immigrants' integration have mostly investigated migrants' access to housing, residential choices, residential mobility, and more generally, residential patterns and their effects on migrants' economic opportunities and social relations. An important body of scholarship has also addressed the development of effective ties linking migrants to their place of settlement. Along these lines, we find studies revolving around notions such as placemaking, homemaking, belonging, identity, and so on. It may come as a surprise, though, that despite the recurrent appearance of the term spatial integration, in many publications and reports, its definition is usually taken for granted or derived from its opposite. That is, the lack of spatial integration. Thus, the formation of immigrant ghettos or the concentration of immigrants in specific areas of the city, for instance, would mean a lack of spatial integration. Accordingly, an emotional detachment from place or a lack of identity would, it, uh, would testify to a problem of spatial integration. Despite uh, such commonsensical perception of what problems related to spatial integration might look like, there has been very little theoretical effort to provide the term with a working definition. So, in um, this presentation and uh, building uh, from uh, studies of Caroline Knowles, uh, Franzburg, and others, I take a different approach to the idea of spatial integration. 
My point of departure are migrants and their ways of using the city, regardless of the circumscription of their whereabouts or their affective ties towards a space. So um, I have uh, with this presentation two main uh, goals. First, understanding uh, how migrants produce urban knowledge and how it is embedded into their everyday intersectional and practical experience of city life. And secondly, understanding how the attributes of the urban space shape the socio-spatial practices and corroborate the construction of the sense of place of the transnational migrants. So let's uh, look at the, what does uh, it mean to say that someone is integrated to urban space. Well, as I've mentioned before, uh, um, there is this residential approach. So we look at the residential patterns, if they try to concentrate, or if they live in mixed neighborhoods and so on. So urban integration is seen as the opposite of residential concentration. This means residential mix is optimum. If we look at the political discourse and some um, policy measures uh, at the city level, there is a trend to promote this kind of mixing, which in fact it's more problematic. I don't have the time to elaborate into this, but according to a research project I've uh, coordinated at EU level in several cities, uh, looking at neighborhoods and so on, uh, in fact it's much more complicated because nowadays um, migrants are not confined at the places where they live. So places where they interact, like place of work, um, schools where their children go, where they go on shopping, their relatives grow to, um, for leisure uh, and so on. So this residential approach um, has been uh, criticized. Another element is the notion of accessibility. So integration is the degree of ease in getting from one place to another uh, measured by time or money spent because this notion of access to urban resources really uh, uh, play a role is important. And the third one, identity and belonging. Integration is the creation of effective ties towards space. Um, there are some limitations to this uh, approach. Um, because it leads to an over uh, simplification of migrant spatial habits. As I mentioned, that they are not confined to the neighborhood or the place where they live. Um, and the misunderstanding of spatial practices. So city dwellers' uh, spatialities transcend the limits of the residential area. It has always uh, been so, but perhaps contemporary urban dynamics have such a reduction, uh, made such a reduction uh, an aberration. So uh, many researchers criticize this uh, kind of approach, more focused on uh, residential patterns. Um, so that's why I propose uh, a more practical uh, approach. Uh, that looks at um, migrant uh, uh, spatial practices uh, in, in the city. So um, uh, my department point is that uh, cities are places uh, of learning. They are constantly sought to be learned and relearned by different people and for very different reasons. Cities are something we use, something you learn to use, and something that changes according to the uses we make of them. That's why sometimes we have the impression that no two people live in the same city because there are so many cities within a city or so many ways of knowing a city that render urban space a very complex, multi-layered setting interacting with us as an ongoing set of possibilities. Uh, that's in the words of Caroline Knowles. This means that different lives correspond to different forms of inhabiting and relating to urban environments. But space is bound up in ways of knowing. 
which means that not knowing where to go or how to go impacts the activities one carry out or the experiences one can fit or kept from, li from living. In fact, as a great deal of that knowledge is embedded in local experience, learning it becomes a matter of great relevance and urgency for immigrants and other new arrived. Therefore, to look uh, at the ways migrants learn the city is to ask what versions of the city are available, what kinds of urban life are lived, or can uh, be lived. The ways we use space are not only dependent on our age, social class, gender, and so on, but also on the very spaces, resources, boundaries, social codes, service availability, topography, accessibility, transport network, and other concrete aspects composing urban uh, landscapes. So that, um, I propose a working definition of spatial integration is the development and maintenance of relations of use and knowledge over the practiced space. So um, I will try to illustrate this to an empirical analysis of two case studies, two cities, Lisbon and Los Angeles, in contrasting geographic contexts located in the two main destination countries of Brazilian migrants, Portugal and the United States of America. And um, I've um, used the secondary data from the US Census Bureau, the uh, Brazilian Foreign Affairs Ministry, just to give the context, and the Foreign and Urban Office in Portugal. And then um, I use qualitative data, uh, 32 in-depth interviews uh, conducted with Brazilian immigrants, 16 living in Los Angeles and 16 in Lisbon, and also mental maps that uh, each one uh, is drawn with their representation of the city and the practice uh, space uh, in each one uh, of the cities. So the recruitment rationale took into consideration diverse age, gender, class, and so on. So, um, and I must go um, faster. Just to give you the context, Brazilian migration to the uh, US, um, it's a, a relatively small flow until recent decades, began to grow significantly in the early 80s, driven by a series of economic crises in Brazil, but then it doubled during the 80s, almost tripled in the 90s, and then stabilized, followed the Great Recession, and uh, in 2017, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, there were uh, estimated 370,000 Brazilian immigrants living in the U.S., representing less than 1% of the 43 million immigrants uh, in the country. And approximately one-fifth to one-third of them are in the U.S. without authorization. But according to the Brazilian authorities, uh, there are much more Brazilian immigrants living in the US, their estimates are more than um, 1,400,000, 70% undocumented. Most of them uh, live in New York, Miami, and um, as you can see, the most uh, important uh, places uh, where they, they live. Uh, if we look once again to the U.S. Uh, Census Bureau data, you can see that uh, they are uh, mostly living in Massachusetts, Florida, and also uh, in uh, California. And you can see here some data regarding the top counties where they live. As you can see in Los Angeles, um, according to the U.S. Uh, Census Bureau estimates, there were only 10,000 in such a big uh, city. So, um, and you can see uh, that it's really a recent uh, phenomenon because uh, since 2000, between 2000 and 2010, uh, came 39% of, uh, of those Brazilians. Um, 
the, the case of Portugal is completely different because the Brazilians are the biggest migrant group in the country. They represent 20% of the total foreign documented migrants in the country. They um, uh, grew very fast since mid 90s and peaked uh, in 2010, 2011. And then because of the impacts of the economic and financial crisis, they declined as you can, you can see. Uh, but of course, um, we must um, take into consideration that part of this decline of the stock uh, is due to the fact that most acquired the Portuguese nationality. As you can see that since 2008 until 2017, more than 52,000 Brazilian immigrants acquired the Portuguese nationality. So we must uh, look at uh, this. They disappeared from the statistics, but uh, in fact, they stay. So two very different contexts. Um, they are uh, in all over the country, even though they um, are more represented in the Lisbon metropolitan area, in the Algarve and along the coast, but in also medium-sized cities in um, uh, all uh, country. Um, in the Lisbon metropolitan area, they represent 22% of the foreigners documented uh, in, in this region, so they are really a group very visible um, in, um, in the country and, uh, and in the city. Um, so let's look, move now to some of the um, uh, findings of our uh, empirical work and uh, interviews uh, that, uh, uh, with which I try to illustrate uh, how important is this process of spatial integration and the, as a process of learning the city. So um, from these quotations of migrants um, in Lisbon and the Los Angeles, um, one important uh, element that came out is the size of, of the cities because some came from small cities. So the experience of the migrants um, uh, have really an impact uh, on this process uh, uh, of learning. Um, so uh, in, in uh, uh, um, Angela uh, words, for instance, she said, I found everything different. It's like thinking you out of your habit. So we need to learn how to live in a different uh, environment. Uh, learning the city, uh, you can see here uh, how the city can act and have an impact in this process of learning. The transport network structure, its quality and availability determine uh, Eliana's and Bernardo's modes of mobility. It produces know-how, know how to go from one place to another. And this knowledge enhances or constraint migrant cap capabilities and needs. And here, the urban structures of Lisbon and um, Los Angeles um, that are really very different, really have an impact on migrants' spatial practices in both of the cities. Um, so you know Eliana in Lisbon, uh, she had never been on the subway before, she had to learn. But then they, she found Lisbon a very easy city, so mobility was really accessible. So the way she could, they, they, uh, um, her special practices could be completely different as in the case of uh, Los Angeles. Uh, Los Angeles uh, is a big city with um, freeways and without a car is almost impossible to move from one place to another. So in fact, the urban structure and the transport system plays a very important role on this process of urban integration. And it's, it's clear expressed in this mental map uh, that was drawn by Lisa, a Brazilian migrant uh, in, um, in Los Angeles. So uh, this um, freeways uh, and it um, took time to 
to move from one place to another, and it in fact um, it difficulties mobility and also social relations to move and to, to meet with um, other Brazilians, friends, and, and so on. So access to mobility really have an impact in spatial practices. So the urban structures and uh, all this um, play a role, giving the fact that Lisbon uh, is more friendly um, than Los Angeles, uh, is Lisbon as an easy city to move uh, around, and in fact the opportunities uh, to use urban space and have access to urban resources are uh, completely different, uh, like you can see from those uh, uh, quotations. Uh, once again, uh, this mental map um, shows uh, clearly how um, the spatial practices are limited from a place of um, uh, residence uh, to work and so on because it's very difficult uh, to move from one place uh, to, to another. Um, so daily spatial practices, uh, once again illustrated here, but with uh, good public uh, transportations in the city of Lisbon, so it's much more uh, possible to move. Uh, well, and um, I don't have time to go, I will uh, finish um, uh, right now, but uh, uh, in fact, uh, what I would uh, like to um, uh, stress uh, with these uh, quotations, it's this important to look at the individuals, migrants, and not generalize the, and um, to look only at the um, spatial um, integration uh, related with uh, spatial of residences uh, because um, our uh, lives um, don't, um, uh, are not confined to one space and the city structure um, really plays a role in the development uh, of this process of uh, integration. It takes time um, and there are, um, there are cities that are more easy to learn than, um, than others uh, and um, it's a process. Uh, it's not something uh, static that um, um, uh, changes uh, over time in order to become uh, local. So as you can see in these quotations, today I'm already adapted, so this means that learn to live in a different uh, uh, environment, to live here, the way things are here, the weather, the food, the people, the language. It was difficult for me to adapt here at first. I think it took a couple of years, but now I like it here. I already feel that I am from here. Here is my home now. So. Um, becoming, in fact, a, a, a local. Uh, and yeah, Olivia from Lisbon, I'm completely adapted here. Not strange things, I got used to live here, uh, which is better than in Brazil, uh, I think. And to conclude, so, um, Urban integration as a process of spatial apprenticeship, uh, as a learning uh, process. And um, this urban uh, knowledge is uh, relevant in shaping migrants' participation in urban life and facilitating or constraining the access to urban resources. So, um, in fact, the, um, the process has, are much more complicated than uh, traditionally uh, we used to look uh, at uh, this process of, uh, of integration from the perspective of the host society because, uh, in fact, um, each migrant is different from uh, each other. Uh, so, um, in fact, looking at the uh, migrant spatial behavior, we should look not only at the relevance of occupation and family structure, uh, spatial roles and their different uh, logics, because it depends on the place we work, we live, the children go to school, we have um, uh, family members or friends and so on, uh, we are not confined. And uh, another important element, it's this notion of place-specific integration, because we should um, take into consideration 
consideration the role of urban structure, public transports, uh, and so on. So the process of urban integration in Lisbon and um, Los Angeles is quite different, even though we are speaking of the same migrant uh, group. But uh, in fact, um, this uh, urban structure um, and um, the facilities they have play an important uh, role. So this knowledge is a precondition to access um, to different uh, resources to solve problems. Um, and uh, this is an important element we should take into consideration in regarding to uh, integration um, policies. Thank you very much for your attention.